So I want to reach out to all of you uh, gardeners out there. This is the year of 2020, 2020. And many of you are getting prepared for the spring season. In fact, I'm way ahead of schedule this year. And I'm thankful that I'm able to do such. So I want to reach out to all of you in hopes that you could uh, possibly engage in gardening if you've never done so but you're still contemplating on gardening. And for those who already garden but still have some difficulties in their garden, growing things like citrus trees, fruit trees, berries and such, I wanna reach out to you. And even you experienced gardeners who don't grow in large containers like I do, you may wanna take note of this information. Now everybody uh, know who I am. And if you don't, I'm uh, formerly known as Organic's Best Urban Gardener where I taught people how to grow food in containers, in small spaces, vertically. So whether you have an apartment, a condo, a small back porch, or no backyard, I can guarantee you that you can still grow food if you just follow my simple, proven techniques. So, people have known me for growing citrus trees. We're talking about large trees, full-size trees inside of containers, fruit trees in containers. They've known me even more so for the strawberry milk crate tower, where I grew strawberries out of milk crates and stacked them on top of each other. And I'm also known for blueberries in containers, as well as my beautiful garden roses. So let me um, explain to you what works, what doesn't work, and the trial and errors that I've gone through and faced in trying to get a soil medium that is um, just a correct um, mix that is uh, conducive to growing um, full-size trees. Now, here's the key. First of all, I've grown dwarf varieties and I graduated to semi-dwarf varieties. I've never grown full-size trees. I'm talking about trees that are not dwarf or semi-dwarf in containers. I feel that the containers will uh, have a very short lifespan considering the uh, massive size of the roots on full-size trees. So what I'm talking about today is dwarf variety and semi-dwarf, okay? Now the mix I used to use, as many of you know, but you newcomers, listen closely. 65% azaleas potting soil. 30% small, medium wood bark, 5% cocoa courier. That worked for many years, but there was a time when it seems like when I watered my plants, uh, they no longer held water. Within a day or two, the entire 25 gallon container, which is half of a full wine barrel, I used a circular saw to cut those containers in half, and that's where I stored my trees. You could literally move them around in a few days and it felt like I just watered them. Well, the roots started to outgrow the container, but before that happened, the soil mass started to recede. Why? And why so fast? Well, every three years when growing a tree in container, there's some things you gotta do. You not only prune the tree, but you gotta do what they call root pruning. So I would take the tree out of the containers, and trust me, that was difficult. Here's the kit key. I would take a regular handsaw, put it on the outside of the uh, soil mass between the soil and the inside of the container, the wine barrel, and I would just go around like that and loosen up the soil. Well, it was pretty easy to take out, but I needed help when it came to uh, actually getting a really good grip underneath the tree to pull it out from the container without the container trying to lift too, adding more weight. So I would have my wife hold the container down. So listen, I tilt the tree over to the side and see all the massive roots and see how um, uh, root bound they were or what we call pot bound, okay? I would loosen them up and so forth, but I saw a lot of sludge and I couldn't understand what is this sludge and the color is brown. Hmm. Well, it turns out it was Coco Coyer. Now, Coco Coyer can be a problem in containers over the time period, especially if you're using a good amount of it. 
it turns to sludge and that uh, introduces bacteria and that can cause root rot to the third degree and that is not a good thing for your trees so I said to myself what else is going on and I noticed the soil mass had eroded and so it wasn't able to hold water because it was all root and pot bound so I said these are dwarf variety trees so I learned really quick that within three years if you still have your tree in a 25 gallon pot there's going to be some issues so let me give you the breakdown on when you should repot your tree before I move on first of all when you buy your trees at your local nursery they're normally going to be between 5 and 10 and 15 gallons a 5 gallon tree is more common and most people can afford a 5 gallon tree because the prices range from 15 to 30 bucks depending on the location it may be about five or ten dollars higher and then when you get up to the 15 gallon trees you're looking at 75 to 120 dollars depending on the variety the tree and location now when you have a five gallon tree it's best to repot that tree within a week after you've gotten it home why do I say a week which equals seven days is quite simple it's because you need to allow that tree to acclimate to its new environment just place it in the area where you want the tree and make sure you know the lighting um, recommendations for the tree bright light morning sun full sun you need to know that so that wherever you place that tree and allow it to acclimate to your environment your microclimate in your garden the next thing would be to then repot that tree up now the experts say don't repot your tree more than four inches wide up so if you have a pot that's like this this is as wide you want to go to the next size that's a no-no for citrus trees I don't believe that I've tried this and I have proven that your citrus tree should go from a five gallon pot to a 15 gallon pot for those who are inexperienced okay just skip the 10, 10 gallons and go to a 15 gallon this is not a nursery in a nursery <coughs> excuse me they will tend to graduate the pot slowly because they're selling these pots to these plants to you based on their size if you ever went to a local nursery you'll notice at times there are some five gallon trees that are bigger and that look even better than a 15 gallon tree in the same in, in, in a larger pot and then there's times when a 15 gallon citrus tree uh, look worse than a five gallon and maybe smaller so that's some sort of marketing going on there never fool never fall for that you need to understand and know what the age of a tree is because I've seen the um, the lies that nurseries have revealed and they didn't reveal them to you they revealed it to me why because I was very very cautious and I studied how do you tell the age of a citrus tree and I knew how to do that and I'll tell you that in part two coming up okay so the thing about it is that your pot size is very important so here's what I come up with you buy a five gallon tree you immediately plant it into a 25 gallon wine barrel and for three to four years that tree can remain there you're right at three I say four because the tree is gonna be pretty tiny we've been told over time to not plant a tree in such a big size uh, container because water is going to go away at its least resistance away from the roots that's not what you want well that's half true it's not what you want but if you got a soil amendment that holds on to enough water but not enough to cause root rot that's the way to go so I go straight to a 25 gallon and today I go to 40 gallon containers these are very durable plastic containers uh, made by a wonderful company called GrowPro not GoPro but GrowPro okay so let's get to the soil amendment that I use today okay so I came up with a soil 
alternative for citrus. 65% azalea soil mix. That remains the same. But listen closely. If you don't want to spend the money on that type of potting soil because it can cost you 10 to $15 per three cubic feet, then you can go ahead and create your own potting soil out of topsoil, mushroom compost, if that's what you prefer. Okay? It's quite simple. And then add you something like a, um, a pathway bark, or you just simply add you some cactus mix, which is a more gritty sand made for potting plants to give it more of a uh, loose soil so that it drains well. Okay? And remember, no matter what soil amendment you use in that uh, alternative way, you want to add your own nutrients. Preferably, you want to add soil sulfur. That's going to lower the pH because citrus trees like to be between 4.5 and 5.5. So it'll lower the, C, the, the pH. In saying that, make sure within 30 days to 60 days, you use a small kit you can uh, buy for about $15 at your local nursery and test your soil to see is it optimum for, the, uh, for your tree at the time. If it's not, you want to play around with pH and P up, pH up and pH down. And you can play around with those things. Okay, we'll go over more of that in another segment as well. But in the meantime, let me share my mix. 65% azalea soil mix, 30% small, medium pathway bark. Watch this, no cococoria, 5% play sand. Why? Because through my research, citrus trees and most fruit trees love growing in sand. So if you go to subtropical conditions and, and tropical conditions, you'll find that uh, most along the coastal areas near the beaches and the waters, there's some sand and you find coconuts, bananas and all sorts, papayas, guavas and so forth, avocados, everything grows there. Everything loves growing in sand, even your, even your, uh, your daily vegetables, believe it or not. So, that's what you can purchase. If you don't feel like you want to take the time to make your own soil, then I suggest you buy the 65% azalea soil mix. I personally like to create my own soil, but in doing so, you got to make sure that you use a pH down, a soil sulfur, or you can use cottonseed. Both will lower the pH, and you have to check your pH with a kit. It's very important and that's one thing many gardeners are lacking. They assume once they throw some compost and some ingredients together, the soil is fine. Everything's great, but that's not true. You want to make sure that your citrus trees is between 4.5 to 5.5. Once you got that pH right and you got the right soil amendments, the type of soil uh, that is going to hold on to some moisture, but at the same time, allow it to drain as well. And that's where the sand comes in. So it's very important that you understand that you don't want to overdo it with the sand, but just enough. And you can buy the sand at your local big box stores. You get 50 pounds for roughly about $5 and at times $10. So depending on where you go, that price is going to vary. Other than that, um, Make sure you water your trees accordingly. Make sure you fertilize your trees on a monthly basis when dealing with containers because every time you water your trees, your nutrients are going to um, be basically be washed away. So it's very important to uh, know that you have to feed your trees every day because the only feeding they get is from us, us humans. We are the caretakers once they are in a container. They can't feed themselves. So remember, you don't have the same microbiology as you would if you were growing in the ground. So it's very important that if you can, place your tree completely on top of grass or an area in the ground so that the worms can make their way up through the holes. If not, and you have them on dollies on top of a, um, maybe a concrete patio, 
it's very important that you introduce worms into the container soil mix. Very important. And I'll tell you something. Every uh, month, do yourself a favor. Look and see if your soil is receding from the top of the container. If it is, top it off with compost. And as the compost breaks down, it'll provide continual nutrients for the soil. Otherwise, you could do this every season, which I prefer to do it. Spring and fall, especially in the fall. I put a nice layer there because I don't do a lot of feeding to my citrus trees or fruit trees during that time of year. But the citrus trees are very important as, the, as they are different than the fruit trees during the uh, autumn, fall, and winter season because they're now producing fruit. So you need to still feed them. That's very important. Other than that, make sure you prune your trees accordingly, okay? And with citrus trees, you don't want to open up the canopy like you do when it comes to fruit trees. Because one thing about citrus trees, you want to make sure they still keep their lower canopy because it's going to provide a cool environment for the trunk and the feeder roots on top. Very important. Now with a fruit tree, that's opposite, but we'll talk about that in another segment as well. Now I've given you folks these wonderful tips that have helped me out for many years, and I hope that they will do the same for you in your garden adventure. Until then, stay tuned, stay connected, and I'll bring you more. If you have any requests and wanna know more about growing citrus in containers, post below or simply send me an email and I'll get back to you. Until then, from my heart to yours, Martin Grusho.